and I'm Edwin, and this is our self-built tiny home that we live in on our homestead with our little dog, Whiskey. So one thing that I'm very passionate about, and Clara is too, and what gives us a, a lot of life in our life is being outdoors and in nature. We love backpacking, we uh, do like recreational climbing, we do a lot of recreational outdoor sports. I don't think anything beats nature for us uh, as far as like a provision of adventure and fun. So the idea of living in a way like we were backpacking, you know, like camping, it's like what if we were like out in the woods but we we're living like backpacking without all the pain of actual camping, right? What if you could eliminate that inconvenience and be in a very comfortable, uh, safe feeling setting and yet still surrounded by the thing that we love most, which is you know, the outdoors. So that's what motivated us. And that is every time things get difficult for me or uh, you know something breaks again and I have to fix it, I just look outside and I see the trees again and it offsets all of the discomfort so far in this, this whole last year that we've been living out here, it totally makes up for it. We just always feel really grateful that we're out here. We live on 23 acres in Northern California and our tiny home on wheels, the trailer's dimensions is eight and a half feet by 24 feet long. Um, so approximately 264 feet, square feet of uh, living space that we're in. Welcome to the inside of our tiny home right here. So the first thing that you're looking at here is our main bed. We actually have two beds in the tiny home, but this was the one that we um, specifically designed for us to sleep in. There was a number of features when we were planning out this tiny space for ourselves that was very specific to what we wanted. This bed is one of them. The feature that we wanted was just a little bit more headroom in the loft. So when we're going up and down and getting in and out of bed. It's just like for us, we really like to be able to sit up. We like to be able to sit up and drink coffee in bed or you know, do all those things and feel really comfort comfortable at the end of the day. So that's our spot um, and we love it for that. Uh, one of the things that we really love too is when we you know, go to sleep, we have these hammer beams right here that we get to look up and stare up at. And for us, it just reminds us of the hard work that we put in to carving and making this wood and making this home our own home. Alrighty, so this is our storage in our tiny house. So this is where we keep all of our clothes. We have these six foot long drawers on these glides. They come out quite a bit. Um, and each of the, us have our own drawer. And this is an amazing amount of storage in the tiny house. Um, we keep a lot of stuff in there. In order to get up into the loft, we have a ladder that tucks away. So this is what it looks like tucked away. And then to pull it out, all you do is grab the legs, and you place them on the ground. So that's an easy way to get in and out of bed. So we had a bit of extra room um, because of the cantilever on our trailer. So this was extra space um, that we needed to utilize. So the way we decided to do that was um, put a place for hanging clothes and then all of our kind of adventure items that we didn't really have a home for. Here we have, yeah, just different items like our motorcycle helmets and we have all of our uh, shoes, hiking boots. We have all, also our files, like all of our important documents stored in a little uh, container in the back here. And so this was a really convenient spot to just put um, items that we didn't really have a space for. So this was kind of an available uh, space for that. And then speaking of utility, our main source of heating and cooling that also operates under this space. In like an ideal world, I think we would have gone with like a mini split, but um, the initial cost for that, and then a lot of times the earlier ones too required like a professional to come out and set it up. So we didn't want to go through that hassle and we realized, okay, if we went with like an, a suburban propane heater, like that's built in for an RV, we could save a lot of money that way because that, that's only about 500 for that. And then the cooler too was a little less than 500 and it's these low profile 
They're called Master Cools, and it's a low-profile swamp-like cooler, but it's not like the big box. Like on the front, it doesn't look like an actual swamp cooler, so it's pretty nice that way. This swamp cooler, I believe, is rated to like 1,500 square feet, so it's completely overkill for this space, but the summers here are so blistering hot, we're like, no, that's what we want. We want overkill cooling. <laughs> So we're actually really happy with our setup. It's been working really well for us so far. The style of home that we live in is a timber frame home. And the timber framing is the obvious part that sticks out to people. And it's the big wooden beams that come together. And if you look at them, you'll notice that the beams come together without much hardware. Typically true timber framing has zero hardware in it. But you can see they're usually put together by these things called a tenon, a tenon and a mortise. So you cut a pocket in one beam and you cut a corresponding tenon in another and you stick them together like Lego blocks. I was not aware of timber framing until <laughs> we already knew that we wanted a tiny house, but we didn't know that we were going to timber frame it until we built uh, the barn for the family that we helped. And their barn is all timber frames. So that was when I first got, you know, uh, accustomed to this new style of building. And I was just completely enamored by it. You go, you make your own beams, and you see the wood that you know we milled up. You get to carve it, you get to have, you know, uh, I don't know, a, kind of like a relationship with the wood, if, that, if, if that's not going too far. So th there's this like artistic sense to it. Uh, it's not practical. <laughs> it makes the whole build go much longer. That's the reason why stick frame, what we're used to with studs in the wall, that's why that's prevalent is because it's so much cheaper and quicker to build that way. The advantages of timber framing, uh, definitely in my perspective, is its beauty is number one, the aesthetics. Number two, its strength. It's way stronger in, in comparison. And uh, yeah, there's timber frames that are up today, timber frame barns and buildings that have been up for, you know, well over 100, 150, 200 years, you know. For controlling all of our utilities down below, uh, heating and cooling, and our power, we have kind of one centralized space for that, and that's right up here on the corner of the bed. So this is our inverter panel. The reason why we have this big block is because there's really bright lights on it, so it's hard to sleep when um, the lights are shining. So we have this piece of wood here. Um, so basically we can see how much our batteries are producing and storing and we can shut the inverter off and on. Um, this inverter uses a lot of battery power so that's why we want to turn it off especially at night. And then right here we have a control panel for our heater so basically we can choose how hot we want to make the space and then shut it off whenever it gets too hot and then this is the remote control for our fan. And then anytime we need to supplement power we turn on the generator with this little remote um, yeah. So anytime we need to scare off a bear or, <laughs> or get out of bed or whatever, um, this is an awesome place to store our headlamps. They're crucial for tiny home living. <laughs> Off-grid Off tiny home living, yeah. So we live out in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the woods, and one of the key things that was like a big concern for us before making this move was, uh, what are we going to do about internet? Lucky for us, uh, with our cell phone provider, we have a cell phone tower that's only a mile away from us, straight down the way. We just installed a booster right here. This is one uh, side of the antenna. The other antenna is right on the outside of it. So this antenna, uh, the antenna on the outside captures the signal, and this is the antenna that throws it into the house. We've never had an issue with our internet. We stream and watch movies all the time. And the other thing that makes that work for us is we do most of our stuff just like through our cell phones. So we just have like the best cell phone plan that we can get. So like when we're using our laptop or our computer and we need internet on that, then we'll hotspot it. But um, this works really well for us. And then I just do a direct HDMI to my phone. So when we stream movies, it just goes right through our cell plan and not through our hotspot plan, which uh, gives us plenty. So we never run out. So one of the biggest features that we love in our house that just make this whole space super functional is we have a big sliding glass door over here and then we have a big double door, double French door over here. So both of these doors actually open up. 
So on days like this where it's really hot, we actually open both doors and we have this amazing cross breeze that just comes in through and keeps the house cool. Um, it's also an awesome way just to live your life having nature on either side of the house. And it's amazing how much we use both doors too, just coming in and out, going to the other side of the house, vice versa. We found these doors on Facebook Marketplace. Um, this one was only $500, which I'm very, uh, out of and this one was only $300 so we saved a lot of money on um, just doors and glass in general because they're pretty expensive um, but yeah we love these doors these are the best so this space is a very interesting space that came about when we were designing the home and it came about the main reason that actually pushed it forward was Clara was really clear that she wanted enough floor space to be able to do yoga in it and we were looking at that and it's like can we both do yoga in the floor space? Like, is there enough for that? And that was a, a really big challenge for designing because that means like, well, that means we'd have to designate a blank, almost eight foot by eight foot space for, you know, a 24 foot long tiny home. That's a big commitment to do that. We figured it out and that's what this space became. And it became, it actually became this amazing gem for our life because it's, we have the both doors here. So it's the entry, way and then the stairs come in and out and um, being able to pull out the drawers all the way it's just this super multifunctional space that it created just by basing it off this one need we didn't realize how nice it would be and one of our favorite things about the spaces in the mornings or when we're just trying to relax we weren't able to have a couch in here but to compromise for that we have these hanging chairs So we just hang them up on hooks so they're nice and tucked out of the way. And then, uh, yeah, when we want to relax or have coffee or, you know, enjoy conversation, uh, this, is, this is our go-to. So we just sit in our chairs. And what we love about these, which ended up, again, being even better than a couch in a lot of ways, was it gives us the option to look out this, this door or the other door. And um, we love our view out each side. So sometimes we choose one way and sometimes we choose the other. It just depends what we're feeling. <laughs> we acquired this property, we're still acquiring this property from a friend and the opportunity just came about that there's this um, property, it has a meadow, it has a forest and here's a flat spot for your tiny house. And we're like, sweet, no sewer, no septic, no water, no electricity, and here we are. So we had to figure out systems kind of on the fly. We wanted to move in right away. So we were just kind of piecing together all the things, all the amenities that we would need in order to be comfortable. Um, so our systems are not ideal, they're not perfect. Um, if we had more money, we'd probably put into solar, more solar but they work, they're functional, and it's just kind of a lifestyle now. All of our utility water, like our sinks um, and shower, get feeds the garden down below, so we just redirect that water because we're, we don't have a well, so we have to go truck in our water, and we do that once a month. So we truck in water, and then we utilize that extra water that after we've used it, it goes to feed a garden. And then our solar, we only have two 300 watt solar panels, so not a lot. Um, we have a generator that we use to back up our system. All right, so this is our kitchen. So we have two sides of the kitchen. We have the sink and fridge side, and then we have where we actually eat. Um, so on this side, we have uh, first our sink and our dish rack. So our dish rack is actually where we store all of our dishes, and this is also uh, one of our favorite storage saving ideas is just having the storage of your dishes be where they dry. So that's been really convenient. You wash them and then you just stick them in there. Um, so this is our beautiful granite countertop that we absolutely love. Um, it was gifted by a friend. Uh, they had an extra one after building their house. So we scored on this uh, piece of granite. And um, under here we have storage, um, some extra food storage. We have our cinnamon toast crunch in there. <laughs> Um, and we have a lot of drawer space actually for um, for other dried goods. So these are awesome because we live in a very remote uh, area. So just having a lot of uh, food storage helps us out a lot. And closing the lid actually acts as a step. So um, I'm pretty short. So this helps me a lot get my pans and anything I need from this area. Um, so they're sturdy and then when we're not using them, just close them up. 
All right, so this is where uh, we do all of our cooking. So we actually started out with an induction cooktop, which we love. It's super easy to clean. Um, and uh, we just love it for the simplicity aspect of it, but it took way too much uh, energy from our solar batteries. So we decided to install this oven. Um, it's all run off of propane. We have it on a little glide system so we can uh, roll it out when we need it and we can actually have access to five different burners which is handy. We rarely use it but it's handy when we do. And we just roll it right back in when we're not using this and this is a full size oven. So we're really actually happy with this fridge um, for all the space that it gives. It's skinny and tall, which is exactly what we needed for our tiny house because we have all this vertical space in here. And it runs off of a 12 volt or 24 volt DC. So that just makes it very convenient to run off of solar. And under the fridge is a, uh, another drawer storage with a step as well. So we can store things on top of the fridge and get to it easily. One of the design features that we came up with was, okay, so we have this bar table here where we like to eat, and we really love spending time with friends, family. So we knew that when we were gonna build this home that we were gonna have a deck attached to create more space, more social space. So that's our sliding door, and that's why our eating table's on this side. And then one of the uh, key features to that idea too was what if we could have this space free up and not be a wall. So this wall ends up being an awning and goes up and then we can plug another leaf table into the backside here and we can put two stools there. So we've had uh, already numerous occasions where we have friends sitting on that side and we're here and it gives you the ability to cook, feed, socialize and talk the whole time. And our current setup for moving that up is we have a switch here where the wall opens up like that with a switch and then it goes all the way up and then we can close it with that switch. So this is our multi-use spot. We not only eat here, but we also do our work online here or when we're editing our YouTube channel. Oh my God. It is a big ah! It's a girl. This is, oh, that is oh. scary. I don't like that. <laughs> Um, this is where we like to do our work. I can put my monitor here. I got my computer here. Claire could be on our laptop here. It's a really nice space for us to work together on it. If we got too much glare, we just pull down the blind here and we can darken it up, make our screens work nicely. So we do have a guest loft. Um, to get up there, we have a ladder that slides behind the fridge. So basically we just pull this ladder out when we need it, hook it into this little hook, And yeah, so basically this is how you get up into the loft, uh, which we love because we love having our friends and our family stay over. And the awesome part about this loft is it has a California King bed up there. So it's super plush and people generally really love sleeping up there. So for bathroom privacy, we created this pocket door here. Just slides in and out. Just out of uh, cedar wood and then some oak trim dry erase wall. So this is where we like do our notes and stuff um, for the day. Like you can see, I got a list of uh, parts that I need to pick up. So uh, that works out actually really well for us. We're actually really pleased with this as a function. This is our bathroom. And we have our awesome bowl sink. Uh, we really love this uh, feature of the bathroom. It's just a beautiful blue sink that was gifted to us. And then um, this is our medicine cabinet. So we store all of our uh, different toiletries and stuff. It's nice to have a place just to put it all away and then uh, close the doors on it. So it's nice and tidy. All of our laundry goes underneath the sink. Uh, we were hoping to have the laundry, uh, the washer under here, but we decided over here was actually a better place for it. So this is our little laundry unit. We actually do most of our laundry in town just because this does pretty small loads. Uh, so it just makes more sense to do all of our laundry at once in town. But if we were desperate and needed to just wash a couple things, this would do the trick. And right over here is our composting toilet. So the way the composting toilet works is the solids go in the back and the, the liquids go in the front. So basically the liquids go straight out into a little septic uh, field, tiny little field that we have outside. And then the solids go into a bag. And once we're uh, it's full, we basically just take the bag out. We don't care if we're going in a tiny home, we want a big shower. So that's 
what we created here. And it's curbless, which was super key to making this space work because now with the curtain open, it's like this is all usable space. So changing and everything, it's just super simple. Uh, all the flooring's waterproof and it's tapered this way so it can all drain into the shower. We went in with uh, two shower heads. Again, we really enjoy showers at the end of the day. It's, it's our way to re refresh and decompress. And it was kind of a happenstance mistake that I actually <laughs> designed it. Most double-headed showers, it's just you just redirect the one head to the other, but I actually built in two independent systems, which was, again, more work than necessary, but it ended up being uh, an advantage for us in the end. And we're both showering um, at the same time. We have you know independent temperature control, so that's cool. In 2015, uh, really bad wildfire ripped through this area. So we're in the middle of the woods of Northern California. This fire unfortunately destroyed many people's homes. And one of those homes was a family that was a dear friend to ours. And they had spent 30 years building this beautiful two-story timber frame home and a barn. And it all got burned to the ground. I heard that they wanted to rebuild their home. So I wanted to help them do that. And then we also saw the opportunity, maybe they could help us with our tiny home dream. Um, most of our situation is tied very fortunately to this family that you know rebuilt their, their life and that we totally invested the last you know, three years of our life helping them to do that. The whole woods, they live on 200 acres, got burned down and all those trees had to then get you know felled and there's quality lumber in there so they had a mill that was given to them by the insurance that covered their loss and we were out there and we were just milling these dead trees so it was really cool because all of these trees were dead anyway so we didn't actually have to ever kill a tree to get the lumber out of it so we learned how to use the mill when we rebuilt their barn and their home and in return we could also use that mill for our own lumber saved us a ton. So yeah, we were able to cut a lot of the costs as opposed to building something completely brand new. So the total cost of our tiny house that we kept track of was about 30,000. Uh, this back door was an important part of our design because if we come home and we're really dirty after a day of work, this is a quick way to get into the house without messing up the house, clean up and uh, not track the dirt through the house. Uh, I'll lay out basically our general systems right here. Um, but everything that we have here, we're looking to expand on and upgrade and improve in the future. This is just what we're able to afford right now. So basically our current system is we got um, a water tank. We, when we first moved out here, we started with just the 250. We added 500 gallons here. So we have a collective of 750 gallons of water and I fill that up about once a month. And we have a, a really awesome working arrangement with a neighbor friend nearby where we go, we borrow their truck and their water tank and then we go and I, it takes me about a mm, couple hours to fill up all of our water. And I do that once a month. So most of the utilities in our house runs off of propane. Ideally, we want to be fully solar and electric for everything. Uh, that's much more uh, in-depth and expensive. So right now, uh, propane is very efficient for us to get in and out and just make this life work uh, immediately as it is. So we have like an instant propane water heater and that supplies all of our hot water needs easily. And we do that by just filling up a five gallon propane tank and we hook it to that. And that only has to be replaced maybe once every two months. So yeah, apart from the propane water heater and our water storage, we also just maintain our own trash. So we just have these two bins, we fit them in our Honda Element uh, and we take that out about probably about once a week and we just take it to the local dump and that's, so we deal with our own trash. And all the homes out here now get built with basically steel of some sort, but this is a very, uh, uh, nice looking shingle type steel. It's more fire resistant. We still went with the wood here because we couldn't let go of wood. We love the feel and the look of wood. Um, so we, we went with a home that was a little bit more fire at, fire at risk, you could say, but the steel still helps, you know, so if a fire does roll in here, it's more resistant.
So it's a little bit unusual to have a cantilever. You usually see this on like um, a fifth wheel style trailer. So we kind of recreated that wet with our own wooden beams in here. And that's what you see here. So this is our power trailer. And what that means is it's a separate unit. This is what's responsible for providing power for our whole tiny home. It's got two 300 watt solar panels on top and it's got the inverter and the batteries and the charge controller all equipped in this. And it creates a, a nice awning slash deck with a nice bench to sit on. Claire and I came up with this with our friends and this was built because we didn't know we, where we were going to move, but we knew that we needed power. So this was supposed to be as flexible as the home is, and that's why this was built also on a trailer. Um, the concept of this trailer is very simple. You just plug in right into the back here, and then your home has power. So what I would want people to know about living off grid is that it's not easy to supplement your power. Um, power is a big thing. We don't realize how much we consume, especially things like an induction cooktop. Um, we tap into our solar batteries a lot, and so we've actually depleted them to the point where it's kind of hard to bring them back now. We have to get a new set. So learning more about how to consume off-grid power and how to set it up before you start using it, and then just being realistic about your needs to, yeah, so it's a, it's a learning curve for sure. As far as a benefit, I, I think there is a benefit for me personally to just be aware of my consumption of resources. You know, definitely living before, it's like, yeah, you know, I pay my rent and my utilities and I don't think about it, right? I just use whatever I want. So now it's there's a freedom there because we're not really paying into utilities much. Like it's a, that went way down, but we are limited and we're working within the means of what we can produce ourselves. It definitely becomes normal after a while and yeah i definitely wouldn't trade what we're experiencing but at the same time i would be like yeah you are taking on more of a challenge by going this route like there are different you're trading out it's not just a it's not just an uh, you know ultimate win scenario you know and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Patreon for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.